This video is sponsored by Alcet E Homes, whose mission it is to accelerate the advent of sustainable healthy living systems around the world. Hi, welcome to Best in Tesla News, episode 84. Tesla delivers a hardcore smackdown, setting yet another world record. And the Model Y in Norway is doing things I have never seen before. And Tesla China is absolutely killing it in production numbers. And Mercedes reveals the EQB. And BMW calls Daimler and Volkswagen for help. And now it says they will catch up with Tesla. <clears throat> sure. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> All this and much more to come on today's episode. Let's dive right in. We have to take another peek at Model Y deliveries in Norway because it is just mind-boggling. The Model Y are not just the best-selling EV in Norway in August with only 7 days of deliveries. They are also the best-selling EV in September so far. But more impressively, the Model Y is already the best-selling EV in Q3 with only 14 days of deliveries and is now a top 10 selling EV in Norway year to date, even beating the ID3 year to date. I have never seen anything like this. And remember, the Model Y cost about $10,000 more than the ID4. So even though the ID4 has been out for the entire Q3, Tesla Model Y has still sold more. But the ID4 has also earned something like $58 million in revenue in Norway in Q3. But the Tesla Model Y has already earned Tesla about $136 million in Q3. So Tesla has already earned twice as much in revenue on their 43% more sales. But it gets even worse for Volkswagen because Tesla has at least 25% cross margin on these Chinese Model Ys. So Tesla has earned about $34 million in Q3 on these Tesla Model Y in Norway in profits. But Volkswagen, well, if they make money on the ID4, is probably not much. It is only a couple of months ago that Volkswagen themselves said they still don't make money on their IDs. But someone like UBS Teardown thinks they do, but they also think that Volkswagen's MEB platform is as efficient as Tesla's. I just don't see that. The ID4 has a 82 kilowatt hour battery, but only has an EPA range of 260 miles. But the Model Y has a 75 kilowatt hour battery and has 326 miles of EPA range. So these two cars are not equally efficient. But anyway, let's give them the 15% cross margin that UBS thinks they have, which will give Volkswagen $8.7 million in profit in Q3 in Norway compared to Tesla's 34 million. So Tesla has already earned at least four times as much as selling their Model Y in Norway in not even three weeks than Volkswagen has earned selling their ID4 in Norway in the last 11 weeks four times as much. So even though it looks like the ID4 is doing good in Norway, it is number three and Model Y is number one. It is a close race. Well, it's just night and day when it comes to earnings on these two cars. And just look at this chart from Norway's EV sales in September. Yeah, Tesla is shooting for the moon and the rest is fighting down below. And we can see that the EV sold in Norway year to date already has surpassed the whole year of 2020. Nice. And as Roland wrote here on Twitter, Norway sells almost a one third of the BEV sold in the US. But the car market in the US is a hundred times bigger. That is quite amazing. Well done, Norway. But remember, Norway, GM is coming for you. Well, they just recalled all the EVs, so don't really think so. And in Norway, year to date, they have sold, hold on, two Chevy Bolts. So, luckily, it's a pretty simple recall in Norway. Damn it! And Tesla is just killing it in China. Their production numbers for August is beating even the bulls' estimates. 
I guess the rumors we heard about the Model Y being at a production run rate at a thousand per day and the Model 3 at 800 per day at the end of August sounds like they are true because Tesla Giga Shanghai increased sales by 34% in August compared to the month earlier. They delivered 44,264 made in China Model 3s and Ys. Their previous record was just above 37,000 so a very big jump here and with the production capacity capacity of over 44,000 per month, this is an annual run rate of 528,000. So they are really ramping up. And of these 44,000 cars, 31,379 were exported and 12,885 were delivered domestically. So now Tesla has delivered 152,531 cars in China year to date from January to August. And in all of 2020, Tesla delivered 147,997 units. So they are growing in China. Sorry, short sellers. And now we still have four months to go. And in September, Tesla will probably not export as many if they're following their usual trends. So we will probably see something like at least 30,000 domestic sales in September and again in December, as we have seen in every other quarter this year. Tesla export in the first half of the quarter and sales locally in the second half of the quarter, especially the last month in every quarter. No other new energy vehicle vehicle manufacturer export as many EVs as Tesla does in China. SAIC is at 4074, BYD at 781, just to give some comparison. And to compare to the domestic sales of the other EV makers, Xpeng reported 7214 in August and that was actually up 172%, so very good for Xpeng and a total of 45992 EVs year to date. NIO reports a sale of 5,880 electric vehicles in August, up 48% year over year, but that is much less than in the past several months, but still a total of 55,767 EVs year to date. BYD sold 30,382 pure electric vehicles in August. So BYD is by far the biggest EV makers in China right now here in August. Volkswagen had a great month in China as well with their two joint venture, the FAW Volkswagen and the SAIC Volkswagen, saw a combined whole sales of 11,756 new energy vehicles. I could not find if that includes some hybrids or what exact models those 11,000 were, but still 11,000 electric cars in China for Volkswagen would be a big step up for them, but still less than what Tesla delivered. But for Tesla to be able to produce over 44,000 cars in China in August is very good sign. Maybe they are already not so constrained by semiconductors anymore. So this does vote very well for the Q3 numbers from Tesla, because I did not expect them to be able to ramp up China this fast with supply chain issues and everything going on. And I said maybe they could produce about 225,000 here in Q3 globally, but that was probably too conservative. I know Wall Street has a target just beneath that, but we might be looking at something closer to 240,000 or something. And if Tesla China can really produce over 50,000 cars per month now, we could be getting close to the 900,000 deliveries for the year again instead of the 850, 860 numbers. So all in all, looking very, very good. Can't wait to see the numbers by the end of this quarter. Then we will have a really good idea of where Tesla could end this year. But as Elon wrote in a mail to his employees, brace for the biggest wave in Tesla's history here in September. And we know Elon gets a lot of hate for being too optimistic on his timelines. But well, that's not just Elon. Remember, he did actually predict Tesla's 500,000 production numbers in 2020 all the way back in 2014. So that was pretty cool. But he did also say in 2015 that Tesla would have a market cap of 700 billions in 2025. Well, most people just laughed at him and called this insane and thought he was crazy. But that was actually not too optimistic. That happened almost five years earlier. And Homer's catalog treated this and Elon replied, I'm not always late, haha. -ha. 
But Volkswagen has been saying pretty much since 2010 they will be the leader in the EV market. Back then they predicted by 2018. Well, that was too optimistic, because even three years later here they are still not the leader. Tesla is, and BYD is actually beating Volkswagen in production volume of EVs in the first half of 2021, so they are not even number two. And they continue today to say they will lead. Dice said, I really doubt that anyone could be faster than us. Well, you are already not the fastest, but we will see how 2021 ends and how 2022 will start, because Volkswagen have discontinued two of their best-selling EVs, the E-Golf and the E-Up, and the ID3 is not selling as well as they did. So, we will see. Because Volkswagen did also just talk about das Kleinwagen Dilemma, the small car dilemma, that they cannot make an affordable compact EV yet, even though many people probably thought they did with the E-Up. They even said it themselves, we make a pretty good, simple, affordable E-Up. I guess that car was only for complying reasons. DICE has previously said that they lost about $5,000 on selling the E-Up and the E-Golf, so yeah, they were bad for business, but selling really well, so maybe they should have kept them around so they could actually become the leader in the EV market, as they have been saying they would for over a decade now. Still waiting. Mercedes is revealing a new EV and of course a lot of crazy concepts. The Mercedes EQB. B stands for BORING. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't help myself. Because Mercedes came with the EQS and as I said in my video about it, this was the first electric Mercedes I was excited about. But now we are back with the boring EVs, just like the EQC and the EQA. And remember, the board members of Daimler said the EQC was a failure and a boring car. But now they are making something that looks just like it and does not have as much to offer and just call it EQB. It will only have 100 kilowatts charging. Very disappointing, the EQS had 200 kilowatts charging. So we know they can do much better, so this is just pathetic. Then it will only have 419 kilometers VLTP, so something like 217 miles EPA. In 2022, 217 miles EPA. Are you kidding me? And this car is supposed to be a direct competitor with Tesla's Model Y. But already the Model Y has about 100 kilometers more range, 250 kilowatt charging compared to EQ Boring's 100 kilowatt, already not even competitive. And the quickest version does a 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 6.2 seconds. Even the slowest Model Y doesn't go that slow. Tesla doesn't even have a car that goes that slow. At Tesla, we don't, we don't make slow cars. Okay, just, uh. But the EQC was a boring car. Even Daimler board members said that. But the EQB has less charging speed, less range, and they look very similar. The only thing you will get a little bit more of in the EQB is cargo space. But here the Model Y also beats it. So the only thing the EQB has going for it is that it will be cheaper than the EQC. We still don't have the official price, but the starting price should be around $50,000 and the EQC starts at about $68,000. So more affordable, but this is just not very exciting. EQ boring. It is just so far behind the Model Y, I can't really see it as a competition. But Mercedes also does what Mercedes does best concept cars and they have shown off a couple of great new ones but as we saw with the EQS it did not look much like the concept car so I have little hope that we will ever see any car from Mercedes that looks like they have shown at IAA in Munich. But I actually think this is what Mercedes should do, become the most futuristic car brand in the world, making their concept cars come true. That would be cool. That could put some excitement back in the brand, because everything else but the EQS they have come out with is just very disappointing. And no one of the EVs have a frunk, just like the BMW or Volkswagen. And no, it's not just about space in the front, it's also about safety. They have no crumble zone, but filled the front up with all kinds of crap. I'm sorry, but I really agree with Alex here. This is simply just bad EV design. 
And I know there has just been the IAA in Munich, where the German automakers show off some of their new concepts, but I don't really care too much anymore, because the concept they show never really comes to life, and most of what they're talking about is like 10 years in the future. So let's see who will still be alive at that point to make a boring copy of their concept car. And BMW calls on Mercedes and Volkswagen to join forces for an operating system. This is really a good showcase of just how difficult software is for these legacy automakers. We are not talking about full self-driving software here, we are only talking about our operating system in the car, and BMW needs help. I think this would be really sad, just like I actually think Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is a little sad, because that just means that every car will have the same software. So BMW will not stand out with great software, they will have the same software in their car as Volkswagen and Daimler. Where Tesla has their own, they will stand out from the crowd, also because they have great software engineers, they are actually a software company, and I don't really miss anything from Apple CarPlay. I have all my contacts and favors and messages right here in the car. I can even use my voice to send messages. I have Spotify in the car so I don't need my phone to get to my music. It even shows me every morning what's in my calendar today and if there is something in my calendar with an address and that is up next in my calendar, it will even automatically start the navigation system to the next destination. Just so cool and Tesla keeps adding new stuff all the time and everyone else with Apple CarPlay, well, they all have the same software no matter what car you bought, a cheap Renault or a, an expensive BMW. And we'll only get an update to that software if Apple, not the car maker, but Apple think it's time. But yes, that BMW wants to make a joint venture about an operating system just shows how incredibly far behind they are and how difficult software for these guys are. And if they think this is hard, well, I'm not surprised that Mercedes threw in the towel on full self-driving then. They don't stand a chance. That some people still think legacy automakers will make full self-driving software is just laughable. The best software Volkswagen have ever made was their emission cheating software. And Gordon Johnson was on national TV again, lying again. I don't think many are even taking this guy seriously anymore, because it is becoming ridiculous. Remember, this is also the same guy who said Tesla sales would collapse in 2020, when they grew 35%. This guy cannot be more wrong even if he tried. This time, he said on national TV that Tesla's growth is slowing down significantly. <laughs> what? Here we have the vehicle deliveries trailing 12 months. Operating cash flow, trailing 12 months. Net income, trailing 12 months. These are all going up, Gordon. They have had a compound annual growth rate over the last six years of 56%, just killing all expectation. And they will end up with a growth in deliveries in 2021, somewhere between 70 to 75% growth. Tell me where this is slowing down significantly. Or let's take a look at James' great chart here, showing Tesla's quarterly revenue. They are already bigger in the first two quarters of 2021 than the three first quarters of 2020. Or they are already bigger than the entire year of 2018. They are not slowing down, that is speeding up. And he also continues to beat the drum about regulatory critters, and Tesla would not be profitable without them. Well, let's just get this one straight, Gordon. Here is a chart of Tesla's regulatory credit, and as you can see, they are going down, but net income is going up. And if we take Q2, for example, you can see that the regulatory credit has been cut in half from Q2 2020 to Q2 2021, but their profits have more than doubled. They are up 120%. Or let's just take their gap net income, which was $1.1 billion in Q2, and you can then extract those 200 millions from the regulatory credits, Gordon, if you like to, and Tesla would still be profitable. Yet 
another lie. Unbelievable. You are allowed to go on national TV and just straight up lie and not get some kind of penalty for it. Either Gordon has a hidden agenda we don't know about, or maybe just because he loves GM, or he is just absolutely the dumbest analyst that doesn't even understand very simple math. Well, tip rank does show that he is one of the absolute worst analysts on the planet. Yeah, so we, we have been recommending a short the entire time, and there's no doubt um, we've been wrong on the stock. Yes, Gordon, you have been wrong for the entire time. Maybe you should find something else to do. You are clearly not very good at your job. Sorry, Gordon. And the Plaid Model S was back at the Nürburgring and made a hardcore smackdown. You know, just another world record. Elon tweeted, Tesla Model S Plaid just set official world speed record for a production electric car at Nürburgring. Completely unmodified, directly from the factory and made a lap time of 7 minutes and 30 seconds. That is 12 seconds faster than the Porsche Taycan, which did it in 7 minutes and 42 seconds. So I guess it's back to the drawing board Porsche. And Elon also tweeted, next will be modified plaid with added aero surface, carbon brakes and track tires. All these things can be done without Tesla being in the loop. Man, this is just going to be an even better lap time. And this is not even the roaster we are talking about, but a family sedan that did this. The family sedan that Edmund just said was a waste of money and just a PR stunt. What? Almost every other car review of the car has been awesome and many have called it maybe the best all-around car ever made. But as you can see, Edmund's video was not very well received. And yeah, Edmund's credibility just gets worse and worse. But can't wait to see what the roaster can do. Maybe that will be able to make the fastest ever lap time at the Nürburgring. Well, time will tell. And Elon also tweeted, track software update properly in a few weeks. I know, I know, haha. Ha. <laughs> also Waypoint and other things. Oh yes please, Waypoints. The Tesla car is just a gift that keeps on giving. Has your Audi given you anything lately? Nah, didn't think so. And Alzheimer's e home is slowly starting to climb. As I showed you guys last week, Tesla has arrived and is installing the solar panels and power walls at the Alsted E homes in North Parkwood in Texas, where Alsted already have 30 E homes and are on the track to deliver the 100 homes by transforming homes into E homes this year and follow on with the last land development at Black Oak. This could really be the start of something big. Real estate is, after all, the bigger market than EVs, and Alsted does own the land. And Black Oak, so really can't see why this will not happen. But still, LCD Home is one of the most shorted stock right now. It has been up to $29, but has been shorted down to only $2. That is crazy cheap. If you want a stock that could break out, even Nasdaq.com puts it in the list of possible short squeezes, and you don't get it much cheaper than $2. There are pretty much no risk here, a couple of bucks. This is of course not financial advice, do your own research, but else it has about the same amount of cash on hand than their market cap is worth. Now that does not make sense to me and only shows how shorted this stock is. And they still have no debt whatsoever and the chairman, Mr. Chan's track record, only show he and his team have done it before multiple times on catching the wave of building multi-billion dollar companies. And they have executed as promised, maybe that is why the stock is going up a bit lately, because people see that Alcid e Home are actually building e-homes right now as promised, together with all the other things they do. I still think this is a very exciting company. And a little bit of SpaceX news. Russian space chief invite Elon Musk to his home. I already have the tea kettle on heat. Funny how they laughed at Elon back in the days when he went to Russia to buy a rocket and today they invite him to tea. Yeah, SpaceX has become an even more dominating force in the rocket industry than Tesla is in the EV industry. And Gerard, the group leader of the Inspiration4 SpaceX mission, tweeted, At the last meeting at SpaceX today we heard Inspiration4 is signed off for spaceflight. 
Oh, exciting. And we now are on the way to NASA Kennedy Space Center with a busy schedule right up to launch. And we are only a few days away. Can't wait to see this one. And let's squeeze in the last short news topics into this new show. Yes, it's time for the Tesla shorts. And the police were chasing the plaid. Luckily, it was just fun and games at the racetrack, but of course, the police car did not stand a chance. Yeah, you're not gonna catch the plaid. And Ford is hiring Apple executive Doc Field, who was the head of Apple's car project. Good move from Ford, hope that he can help Ford to get some great software. But Doc is actually the fourth person in charge of Apple's car project to leave in its six year history. Not looking so good for Apple's car though. The construction of United Kingdom's largest energy storage project has begun. Located in southeast England, the facility would provide 99 megawatt of power that would be stored in, of course, Tesla's mega pack batteries. Renault is asking to extend the 2035 EU ice ban to 2040. Come on, Renault. There is not going to be in demand for ice cars beyond 2030. So it doesn't matter to try to postpone it. You need to move faster if you want to survive. And this is not so good advertising for GM's only EV. Chevy Bolt are strictly prohibited for parking in this facility. Whoa, ouch. And Jeff Bezos has reportedly invested in an anti-aging startup lab. Scientists will research how cells age and how to reverse them. And as Elon tweeted, and if it doesn't work, he gonna sue death. And Tesla supercharger factory in China with an annual production capacity of 10,000 charges is now fully complete. So I guess the massive increase in the charging network is about to kick off. And Audi CEO Deutschmann said, I firmly expect that we can catch up with Tesla in terms of products. <laughs> yeah, right. Let me see you catch up to the plaid. And you have released the RS e-tron GT and as Audi said themselves, the best Audi they have ever made. But in terms of performance, it can only just match the Model 3 performance, which cost almost three times less. So have quite the way to go there, Audi. But my bet is that 2022, yes, next year, Tesla will be bigger than Audi in production volume, which produce about 1.6 million cars per year. But we will see who will be right. And Samsung is building a new $17 billion chip factory in Taylor near Tesla's Giga Texas factory. Yeah, that would probably be a good place to put that factory. And we did see some pictures of Tesla's new store in China, Asian's largest single Tesla delivery center today, with 101 parking spaces designed for deliveries. It is the first Tesla center in Beijing with integrated test drive experience, sales and deliveries. Nice. And BMW show off a new concept car that will be released in 18 years. One thing they seem to forget is that in 18 years, the cars will probably not need a steering wheel anymore. Just, just saying. But of course, this is just yet another concept car that will never see the light of day. And Tesla entered the next phase of development in India and began negotiating with the government to create a fully owned retail outlets. Nice, getting closer and closer India. And we saw this mountain covered in solar panels on Twitter this week and Elon replied, impressive. Indeed. And Porsche is out saying that their Taycan is selling so well that they have already sold out their target of 20,000 Taycans in 2021. But remember back in 2019, just two years ago, they said their target was 40,000 a year. So sure, if you cut your target in half, it does sound great when you can say that you reached your target in just eight months. But some of us does remember the original target Porsche. But still, nice numbers Porsche. And Tesla has been granted the pattern where laser beams clean off the breeze of the windshield. Maybe this is what the Cybertruck will have. And before we end off with a bit of fun, I just want to make a quick shout out to my news patrons and members of this YouTube channel. Daniel Hawkers, thank you so much for your general support, man. And Dick Linville, Russell Allen, Lee Xiang, Greenfingers, Brian McDougall, Greg Spawn, Simon Butcher, Disrupted45. And I thank you for watching members, Mark Poposchnik, Thomas Butterworth, 
John Backlin, Rod Hooker, and Grizzly. And my B Nice and Yuwa member, Kirk Anderson and Ark Feng Chan. Thank you so much for all your support. I am doing this all by myself, but you guys are all the producers of this show. Couldn't do it without you. Thank you. And let's end off with a bit of fun. And if you're wondering what it looks like when the legacy automakers are making EVs, well, it kind of looked like this. <laughs> That is all we have time for in this new show. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps this video out a lot. And if you did like it, maybe you want to consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. And if you want to support the channel even more, remember you can for as little as $1 become a patron of this channel and get your shout out on this show. You can also become a member of the YouTube channel to get a shout out and some extra perks. Hit the members button to find out more. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I tweet all the news as it comes out and more. And check out the merch store to get some merchandise and support the show. Now it's also possible to support the show without buying anything, becoming a member or a patron. There is a link to a donation options in the show notes. But going forward, I will be making more videos for patrons and members only, so don't miss out. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice. <laughs>